Good afternoon, Canada. Magandang umaga, Pilipinas. Mabuhay world. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Corazon Ilaw, Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant, owner and RCIC of Fast Track Destination Canada Immigration Service Services, 416-795-2672, 416-795-2672. Ako po ay isang, isang member in good standing ng aking regulator, ICCRC, and member din po sa isa sa pinakamalaking organization ng immigration consultants dito sa Canada, ang KPIC and the atasan po ng title ng subject matter expert sa caregiver programs. Okay, bago po tayo magsimula, shout out po muna tayo sa ating mga prayer warriors within Canada and all over the world, especially from the Philippines, ang ating 3 o'clock prayer habit. And sa ating mga pre, uh, group chats, ang um, interim group, September, October, and open work permit PR, less than 24 months, and PR open work permit, and the other group, living caregiver PR application. Okay, so as per request po, ang ating pong topic ngayon is immigration forms. Ano ba yung immigration forms? Ito po yung mga forms na... na, na mandatory na ating pipi, na i-fill out pag tayo mag apply ng permanent residence or work permit extension or re-entry visa or, or whatever application sa immigration na dapat nating i-apply. But first, let me give you an update. Okay, so effective December 31st of the, of last year, ini-extend po ang restoration of status. So, yung mga walang status po dito sa Canada from January 30, 30 2020 hanggang May 31st, 2021. So, dati po hanggang December 31 lang ang ating, ang ating time, timeline na last day na mag-apply ng restoration of status but ngayon po ang, ang in-extend po nila hanggang August 31. But ang coverage po ito nito ay uh, yung mga nawalan ng status simula January January 30, 2020 hanggang May 31st this year. So, ang um, last day of filing na is October 31 because yung last day ng May 31st so they will be given 90 days to restore. So, May, June, July, August 31st. So, Lahat ng mawawala ng status, last day, August, uh, May 31st, pwede po pa tayong mag-restore hanggang, hanggang, hanggang August 30, 30, 31, 2021. Okay, and another update din po, ito po is mandatory sa mga travel restriction po ito. So, lahat po na magta-travel ng Canada, effective January 7 of this year, kailangan meron na, meron na po silang COVID test result, negative COVID test result bago sila makatravel dito sa Canada and ipapakita po nila yan sa airline check-in counter na malalaman na sila yung negative. So, if this will be effective January 7, so the test should be on uh, January 4. Dapat meron na kayo dyan. Three days before your travel, your, your arrival to Canada. So, let's say, um, January 7, ang arrival natin dito sa Canada, kailangan 3 days before January 4, meron na, tayong, meron na tayong negative COVID test result. And there is still a mandatory quarantine of 14 days. So, despite na meron na tayong negative test result, kasi yung, yung ating mga ating mga symptoms is nag nag occur yan within the 14th day, 14th day. So, Canada is just really playing safe na hindi na tumaas-taas sobra mag, mag, mag skyrocket yung ating, ano, ang ating mga positive results dito. Kaya, uh, this is a mandatory regulation na lahat ng dadating dito is merong, merong negative test result. Okay, so if you have more questions regarding these new two new updates, you may you may enter your questions under this the comment section, and then we will discuss discuss this one by one. 
Okay. Meron pa tayong isang isang itatalakayan na ano na scenario which is most recently na na dumating dito sa office ang isang client na nagpasa na siya ng permanent residence application under the new pilot home child care provider pilot. So pinasa niya yung application niya one week before na ba 24 months siya para ma implied status siya. So with that application package hindi po siya nagpasa ng rest occupation restricted open work permit and hindi rin po siya nagpasa ng job offer. Okay, so the automatic is on hindi siya hindi siya magiging implied status dahil wala siyang wala siyang ipinasa na occupation restricted open work permit before the expiry ng kanyang ng kanyang status. So, ang, 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 in that case, yung case ng client is valid pa naman yung work permit siya, niya. So, safe siya na hindi mo na siya nag-file ng occupation restricted open work permit. But, in niya na after, after, after one week na, na, na marireach niya na yung 24 months, ina assume niya na si immigration na daw ang bahala sa stage 2 niya. Okay. So, may problem po tayo dyan. So, so, meron kasi po tayong stage 1 and stage 2 application. Yung stage 1 po, again, para sa mga applicants na hindi nakakompleto ng 24 months. Biski ang pag time na nag-sign ka ng application at ipinasa mo yung, yung application mo before the 24 month, it is understood, it is clearly understood and assumed that you are submitting your application on stage 1. And you need an occupation restricted open work permit para maka 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 implied status ka or makakuha ka ng open work restricted open open work permit to complete your 24 months or if you will be on implied status na na nakapasa ka na naipasa mo na yan then mako mo yung 24 months with no problem but with you na hindi ka nagpasa ng occupation restricted open work permit Hindi, 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 hindi ka ma-implied status niyan kapag ka nag-expire yung status mo. But then, kapag ka ang status mo is, is valid pa rin, so you're safe. Okay? And then, after reaching the 24 months, let's say after one week na naka, ano ka na, naka, na-complete mo na yung 24 months, you have to, to, to again, um, apply for sta stage 2. Ano ba yung stage 2? Yung stage 2, ito yung, yung, yung application process na na-complete na natin yung 24 months. So, so with this, let's say nakapasa ka na and wala ka pang AOR, it's not safe for you to submit stage 2. Kasi wala silang pagkaka pagkakabitan niya. Ng, it, wala, hindi nila maididikit yan. So, it is advisable na when you reach, reach 24 months and mer meron ka ng AOR, that's the time na magpapasa ka ng, ng stage 2. Kapag nagpasa ka ng, ng stage 2 at wala ka pang AOR, i ipinasa mo yan by paper, nakatenga lang siya doon. Although meron kang UCI, so hindi nila ma ma maipapasa yan. Kung ipapasa mo naman yan by a web form, kailangan meron ka ng... Meron ka ng AOR para maikabit nila and if wala pang AOR yan, pagka sumagot yung ano, yung sumagot yung web form na, of, na agent na nakuha, nakuha yung file mo, sasabihin nila na na-receive na namin yung iyong documents but there is no file to connect this, this documents. So, with, with that being said, it is much safer if you do stage 1 and you have completed stage 2 Wait for the AOR so you have a file number of your application for permanent residence para pagka ipinasa mo yung stage 2 ng proof of completion of 24 months, meron tayong pagpapasahan. Now, ang magiging problem niyan, kapag ka nagpasa ka ng, ng, ng stage 1 and wala kang occupation restricted open work permit, and then nag-expired yung, nag yung, yung current status, 
you will be out of status and we don't know how will immigration will treat that before you can refuse and then you will be asked to leave Canada because you're a person with no status and beyond restoration so that could be a very a, a very problem para sa application and status natin. So, we have to be really be very, very careful. Hindi porkit ganun-ganun i-assume na kagad ng immigration na, oh, naka-24 months na ako, where in fact, ang pinasa mo stage 1. And you haven't submit your proof of 24 months paris ng iyong mga uh, proof of your work experience, letter from your employer, yung mga pay stubs mo, yung working hours mo. That's stage two. So the immigration cannot assume that although you have the uh, you have reached your 24 months of work experience without without the proof, they will not process stage two. So matetenga lang yan ng matetenga sa you, and then that will be create will be creating a problem. Kahi invest na very simple lang yung ating application, it will turn out to be very complicated. Okay, shout out muna tayo sa ating mga viewers. Hello, Antoinette Peralta, Caridad, uh, Mikmik, NJ Mikmik, Zetrock Eileen, Roda Pamplona, Jamelarin, Mo Drame, Niri Kiambao, Cheryl May Valdez, Emelita Jera Herarde, Valencia Abuenga, Jus Gardones, Gardones. Hi po, Happy New Year po. Eileen Garcia, Pat Crisostomo, Happy, Happy New Year, God bless, Roda, Roda Heme, Hemelarin, Hemelarin, Happy New Year po, thank you sa inyong lahat. Alex Ramarin, hello Alex, Revelyn Ordonio, hi Revelyn. Purich Jewel, Happy New Year po. Thank you, Purich. Okay, meron tayong questions dito. Ha, galing kay... Um, okay. Kay Wina, Cervant Wina, Cer Wina Cervantes. Good morning. Is it okay to pass extension of work permit and PR at the same time? Mag-end na po January 25 yung work permit ko. Okay, Wina. Uh, since you you are you, your permit is expiring January 25, kailangan magpasa ka ng kagad ng, ng PR application and restrict occupation restricted open work permit with job offer. This is stage 1. So, kung wala kang LMIA in process, pwede ka, pwede kang, pwede, uh, kung wala kang LMIA in process, kailangan madaliin mo to. But kung meron kang LMIA in process, pwede hintayin mo yung LMIA and kung hindi aabot yan, uh, mawawalan ka ng status but you have time to restore until May 31st of this year you just have to pay restoration fee of $200 so that's gonna be work permit extension employer specific work permit plus restoration so pagka na nakompleto mo na yan and then you're out of status kapag ka, pwede ka mag-apply ng occupation restricted open work permit with restoration of status kapag ka hindi pa mo natapos yung mga yung, hindi pa na meet yung mga documents as per document checklist IMM 5983 so it, it could be two ways uh, pag kompleto ka na, submit mo na yan before January 25 plus job offer plus occupation restricted open work permit para makompleto mo in 24 months and it will bring you on implied status and again, if if hindi pa kumpleto yan uh, before January 25, you could do you could do LMIA based uh, employer specific work permit, LMIA based, and then plus restoration. Now, kapag ka na, meron ka ng ano, meron ka ng na restore mo na status mo, meron ka ng new work permit under your employer, then you could submit your PR application. So pending. Kung mamit mo na yung 25, uh, yung 24 months, 
So, diretso na yan sa stage 2. Hindi ka na mag-stage 1. Wala ng job offer pag stage 2. Okay. So, Rafu Chowhadri, Dolph Doty, Ed Castellano are watching with us. Queen Queens Gatchanovan, happy happy hello mom, happy new year. Thank you Queens. Honey Honey Rose K Kidal Kidalayan is watching with us. Jonah Joyce. Hi po Mom Cora, happy new year po. Um happy new year po. Pa advice po about sa infos po ni Habi eh Habi ko. Late register of birth po siya. Pero lahat po legal documents niya, all PSA records. Baptisma, local birth, birth registry, passport, isang name lang po ang po lahat. Except elementary school records niya po ay kailangan ko po bang i-declare na gumamit siya ng other name under generic form po. Thank you po so much. Okay, so yung generic form mo kasi, mga may i-discuss din natin yan. Yung generic, um, pagka, pag, pag, hindi ko masyadong na, na, na figure out pa yan, kapag may other names used sa generic, so ilagay niya yung other name used niya. So, with, with, with that late, regist, late registrant ka, meron niyang ginagawa yung lawyer na affidavit of um, disinterested person and a affidavit of one discern, the same person pag meron ka dyan, I think it, it's not gonna be a problem basta meron kang pro proper documentation to prove na yung ginamit niya as per birth certificate, date registrant at yung ibang, ibang ginamit niya na hindi ka parehas ng name supported by yung mga sinabi mo. So, you should be okay. So, uh, Chera Cherai Goa is watching with us. Rowena Kala, Karalipio Saplor is watching Saneka Remily Taron Gulani and Dulce Andaya are watching with us okay now um, let's go first ito kasi yung masyadong maraming ano, yung application punta tayo sa IMM 5710 Ito yung application to change conditions, extend my stay, or remain in Canada as worker. So, etong form na ito, ito yung ginagamit na, ng mga applicants within Canada. So, kapag nandito dito ka na under the old old pathway ng in-home caregiver program, under child care, or under, under home support worker, pag mag-extend tayo ng ating status, ito po yung gagamitin natin. But before we proceed, meron tayong question dito under kay my Mimiker. Hi, hi Ma'am Corazon. How many months waiting for ha, ha, for ha, waiting po for having an AOR completed 24 months under the Home Support work, Worker Pilot things? So, for now, we don't, hindi natin alam kung ano yung processing time because yung mga sinabit namin before yung mga January applicants, nakareceive kami ng AOR after 9 months. So, with this pandemic situation, everything is unknown pa. Hindi natin malaman kung kailang. Basta ang importante, kapag nakapag-submit ka ng PR, dapat lahat ng ipinasa nyo sa immigration, meron kayong photocopies. Dahil anything happens na mawala siya, meron kayong papakita. And then your tracking number na ipinasa niya yan. Huwag kayo magpapasa lang na, na under regular mail. Mura nga siya, pero pag nawala siya, hindi niyo na matatrack yan. So, with, with the tracking number registered, pwedeng FedEx, pwedeng UPS, pwedeng Canada Post. That will give you registered, registered mail and merong tracking number. So, just in case mag-follow up kayo kay immigration, kay IR, IRCC, meron kayong tracking record na ito na ipinasa, na-receive ng, ng Edmonton ganitong day. So, it is very important na lahat ng ipapasa natin sa immigration, meron tayong kopya. Kaya kahit DIY yan or may consultant kayo, may representative kayo, kailangan humingi kayo ng kopya ng mga forms na ipinasa. Otherwise, Pag nagkaroon ng problem, wala kang copies. 
di ba? So, I urge everyone na hindi pa nagpapasa at yung malapit na magpasa, kailangan meron kayong copies ng lahat ng documents na ipapasa nyo sa immigration. Okay, shout out kay Chevy Sigaya, Camille Verdadero, Niri Kiambao, Zenaida Lagrama, Mel Venteroso. Thank you for watching. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, let's Let's be back to application to change condition, extend my stay, or remain in Canada as a worker. So, ito yung IMM 5710. So, guys, we want to make sure also na kapag gagawa tayo ng, ng forms, kailangan kukuhanin natin yan directly from the website. Kasi kapag outdated yung form na ginamit mo, let's say, nangupya ka lang, at yung form na, na kinopya mo is outdated. Pag pinasa mo yan, isosoli. Yan. Kaya it, it's a must na each time you do an extension or any application to immigration, you, 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 you download the forms directly to, from the website. Okay? So, shout out to get Betty Sebastian, Thelma Calvo, Lot Pagaduan, Joyce Taginis, Kiramay Madadi, Monica Charmin, Abdul Rahman Aslan, hello, Salman Akash, Vat, Vat Jatin, Yatin Patel, Cecil Kihano. Okay. So, check natin yung ating mga questions from the, from the web. Mikey Almenario. Hello, Mikey. Happy New Year po sa inyong lahat dyan, Tita Cora. God bless and more powers. Question po. Paano po yung mga nakapagpasa sa home, home pilot program since ngayong pandemic, ini-extend ma-extend po ba ang LMIA ni employer? O kailangan na i-update lahat ng papers? Okay. Uh, Mikey, Under the Home Support Worker Pilot, wala, wala tayong ano, wala tayong LMIA. It's the job offer. The job offer will not expire. Not unless yung job offer mo is hindi na valid because ayo na ni employer or namatay na yung si employer, namatay na si aalagaan or kinansel na si job offer. So there is no LMIA on the Home Support Worker Pilot. It's only the job offer IMM 5983 and hindi yan nag-expire. Okay, Mikey? So you don't have to worry about it. Um, ag mm, mga foreigners nating ano hindi ko mabasa and Hori Pas Pasadas are watching with us Sara de la Peña Avila Happy New Year po God bless Elvira Gaviola is watching with us Amin Morek and Amia um, Ricarte are watching with us Faiza Fiza and Irene Joyce are watching with us Christine Gonzalez hi Hi, ma'am. Happy New Year po. Thank you, Christine. Mavel Sol Salomeo is watching with us. Rans Dancel Abad, Happy New Year po. Charmy Rav Raval Joshi, Ignacio, Elsa NG, Ka Kasim Siman, Len, Len, Len um, Layani Jory, Jerry, Jerry, Hey, is Alcala and Zet Paglibuan, Sanam Afra, Cheryl, Cheryl Kotake, Paho, Mona Lisa Galamgam is watching, Zara De La Peña, James Asuncion, and Renz Denzel Abad, Frezzy Pasqua, Joy Joy, Cheryl Kotake, Paho, and mine. Minim Girl, Patience, ganda niya, Patience Matenhura, Lynn Atayde, Ryan De Lima, and Joanna, Faye Tanglao, 
Patience, si Patience, Diana Castro Peña, Francesca Banyas, hi Francesca, she is is watching, Cecil Quijano, Mekan, Karen Tatlonghari, Nits, Nanita Nits Paras, and two others, Surya, Vashni, Sonia, Late Andy, Lori, Katu, Karutan, Len Len, Princess I, Alicia, Jean Areze, Echo Cruz de la, de la Milra, Maria Isabel, Christine Gonzalez, Sheriff Odin Ahmed, Maria Isabel, Nelida Gauvin, Diana Hilario, Gur, Gurasham, Rena, Vilma, Kala, Pagurugan, Sharan, Sharan Nahal, Ed Castellano. Hi po, Ma'am Corazon. Meron po ba akong, meron po akong tanong sa aking birth certificate, sa, sa birth certificate po ng anak ko. Married kami ng tatay niya, pero wala pong record na marriage certificate ako sa PSA. Meron po ako certificate of marriage galing sa PSA. Makaka-apekto po ba yan sa application ng PR ko once na mag-apply ako? Salamat po in advance. So, sa birth certificate daw, marriage siya ng tatay nila, pero wala, walang record of marriage certificate sa PSA. Sa Senomar. So, um, kailang medyo makaka-apekto yan dahil kasi kailangan mo ng certificate of marriage lalo na kapag nag-apply ka ng PR at kasama si hubby. So, kailangan mo ng marriage certificate. So, kapag nilagay mo ng marriage ka doon, tapos wala namang record, you have to dig into that. So, punta ka sa PSA and ask for remedy kung ano yun, kung anong pwede. Kasi meron silang senomar, bakit walang ano, merong marriage of, record of marriage sa senomar, tapos walang record of marriage doon sa, sa PSA. So, ask mo na lang sila. I see Bayad Hines in Daipa, Lani, Natalie, Jilma, Ana Manuela, Atamij, uh, Satin Kaur, Cheryl, Cheryl Pajo. Sabi niya, hi ma'am, asking for a friend, Cheryl. Mag four years na siya dito sa Canada as caregiver. Ayan, wala. Okay, sorry na wala dito sa ano. Uh, pasan na lang. Um, kay Mikaela, shout out, Diamond. Merly. And marami pang iba. Okay. So, balik tayo sa IMM 5570. So, yung first dito, yung, yung box number one, nakalagay UCI. So, itype natin itong UCI natin dyan. Maki, alam, na, alam naman siguro natin yung UCI number natin. So, number, box number two, sabi nga nun, I want service in English. Okay, says, okay, Mikey, thank you. Nere Joy, Topia, Happy New Year po, ma'am. Diamond, Jean Pen, Happy New Year. Divine Centeno, Melanie Esteban Tabag, Wena Cervantes, and several others are watching with us. Micaela, Melanie, um, Malin, Zinat, Kamonino, Kasapaw are watching with us. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Okay, let's go to box number 3. Mamaya na po natin, natin i-add yung ating mga question. Tapusin lang po natin itong IMM 5710 para hindi po tayo putol-putol. Okay? So, yung number 2, number, number 3 tayo, sabi, I am applying for one of the following. Yung box number 1, I-check po natin to if we are applying for a work permit with the same employer. So, if we're applying for a work permit with the same employer, 
ibig sabihin to meron tayong LMIA na. Okay? May LMIA na ito. Ngayon, kapag ka wala, tayong, wala tayong status, i-check po natin yung sa baba, restore status as a worker. So, kung wala ka ng status, kailangan mo mag-restore. So, this is, this is always been a question. If you are under implied status, ibig sabihin na kapag pasa ka ng open work permit and PR application before the expiry of your work permit, then you are on implied status. Okay? So, when you are on implied status, your status is still valid until final decision is received. So, kapag ka na-receive yung, yung application for work permit extension na approved siya, then approve ka. So, yun na yung, yun, yun na yung magiging status mo. But, pag wala ka pang nare-receive na any refusal from IRCC while you were on implied status, you are not out of status and there is nothing to restore. Again, kapag ka naka-implied status ka at wala kang nare-receive na refusal at gusto mo mag-extend ng work permit permit mo with a new employer or with the same employer para gusto mo lang magkaroon talaga ng, 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 ng stability na meron kang work permit, hindi mo kailangan mag-restore because there is nothing to restore because there was no refusals on your part. Okay? So, magre-restore ka lang kapag ka meron kang refusal. Pag wala kang natatanggap na refusal at mag extend ka, wala ang restoration. $200 din yun, okay? So, next box, apply for a work permit for the first time or with a new employer. So, itong, itong, itong work permit for the first time, ibig sabihin parang ito yung open work permit natin. It's either occupation restricted open work permit or bridging open work permit or with a new employer. So, pag may bago kong employer, ito yung check mo, yung apply for a work permit for the first time or with a new employer. And then, sa baba nun, get a temporary resident permit. So, this, is on, this will be checked only for those inadmissible applicants. Okay? Okay, next go to the to next one, personal details, details, full name, your full name, your given name, so yung, your, yung given name mo kasama dito yung middle name mo. Kasi dito as per, as per passport ito, kung ano yung nakalagay sa passport mo, kung meron kang middle name, let's say uh, family name, ako kunyari, Ilaw, first name, Corazon, Kunanan. So, ang middle name ko, Kunanan, so a place, Kunanan. Okay? Have you ever been uh, have you ever used any other names, nicknames, maiden name or kung may mga alias ka, i-check mo to, yes. Kung kung married ka, married ka na and then sa sa mga babae ito, at uh, meron silang maiden name, so ilagay nila yung pangalan, yung maiden name nila, let's say ako kunanan, corazon. Okay? So sex female, date of birth, yung date of birth niyo. Place of birth, city and town, let's say ako, Manila, Manila, and then country, Philippines. Okay, kung meron kang, ano, kung gusto mo maging detail, let's say ako sa Manila, Sampalok, ako pinanak, Sampalok, Manila, or pwede rin Manila, Philippines. So, ito hindi naman masyadong, ano to, hindi masyadong delikado ito. Okay? So, number six, citizenship mo, nakalagay doon, Philippines. So, meron drop-down box doon, ilalagay doon, Philippines or kung saan ka pinanganak, kung, sa, kung di ka sa Philippines, pero ka nga, ma, maraming drop, drop down boxes doon of your choice kung ano yung dapat na, na ilagay natin. Sabi, current country of ter or territory of residence. So, si, pag nandito tayo, since, since 57 to, this is inside Canada, nandito tayo sa Canada. So, ang status natin is worker. So, ang validity from the time na dumating ka dito, kung kailan ka naging worker, let's say dumating ka ng January 2018 hanggang ngayon, January 2021, so ilalagay mo ng worker from January to January 2021 or kung ano yung nakalagay dito sa work permit validity mo. Let, pwede, pwede mo rin ilagay nung as of to date kung kailan mo siya ipipirmahan eh, or kung kailan yung expiry ng work permit mo. Okay. Mamaya na tayo mag magsagot. Okay. Um, number eight, 
previous countries of territories of residents during the past five years. So let's say kung worker ka from the past five years before before to date, let's say nasa Hong Kong ka. So kung yung Hong Kong ka, sabi last five years. So January ngayon. So January 2021 ngayon, no? So count five years back. January 20, January 2016, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. So, January, January 2016 to be exact. Kasi sabi, last 5 years. Kung January ngayon, January 5 years back. So, ilagay yung date kung kailan tayo worker dyan. Okay? So, your current marital status. So, it could be married, single, divorced, legally separated so mag ano lang, na lang kay dyan since meron meron tayo mga 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 applicants na nag nag married sila pero din declare nila single at ginagamit nila is yung single name nila so kung talagang legally married ka this is this is the time for you to correct let's say kung kung nung time na, na dumating ka rito nilagay mo lang single single because your agent agent told you to do so so mali ngayon kung ano yung talagang current status mo and that is acceptable because you're telling the truth na 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 married ka na kasi kapag ka single ka nilagay mo single hindi mo makukuha si 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 asawa okay so we have to be truthful with this so kung meron kang kung nilagay mo diyan na may as na married ka ilalagay mo yung kailan ka nag na kasal and kung sino yung asawa mo now sabi ka na may question din doon kung kung yung relation kung yung common law mo or spouse mo is a Canadian or common law partner uh, ilalagay mo natin dito tick na lang natin yes or no kapag ka yes ilagay mo yes kapag ka ilagay mo no okay next next page tayo page 2 so have you been previously been married ito yung mga mga separated na naka-divorce na so previously married sila. So, ilalagay mo yes. So, kasi kapag divorce ka na, wala ka na, hindi na ilalagay itong kusin yung husband mo or what. Kasi, ang, yung itong, ano naman to, friendly naman itong application na to. Depende doon sa sagot mo. Kapag ka sinagot mo single, nagbablock out na yan. Hindi ka na makaka, makaka, maglalagay ng, hindi ka na makaka-fill out, hindi ka na makaka-enter, makaka-entry dyan kung anong information kasi naka-block out na siya because you're single. Ibig sabihin, wala kang spouse. But, if you are married, tatanong nila, or you're in a common law, kung meron kang previous relationship. So, this, mag, maglalagay yan. Kung ikaw is divorced ka at may previous relationship ka, ilalagay mo dyan. Ano siya, kung, di, kung common law ba siya, kung married ba siya, so, il, ilalagay niyo dyan lahat. Ma, 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 madali lang naman yan yung mga tanong nila. You just have to focus kung ano talaga yung relationship nyo or kung common law ka ngayon, kailangan ilagay mo rin yung common law. Dahil pagka hindi mo nilagay na naka-common law ka, hindi mo siya makukuha. Not unless pakasalan mo siya. Okay? Languages, Tagalog. Are you able to communicate in English or French? Lalagay mo lang doon English. Now, passport naman. Yung passport information, we just enter. So, box number one, passport number, country of issue, Philippines. Okay, ito marami dito nagkakamali. So, let's say, nandito, nandito ka sa Canada, nag-renew ka ng passport sa Philippine Consulate. So, dumating na yung passport mo, dumirenew may may na yung passport mo. So, country te or territory of issue. So, ibig sabihin dito, sa Pilipinas mo yan, sa Pilipinas in-issue yan. So, Pilipinas in-issue, pinadala lang dito. So, kapag ka nilagay mo kasi, pag ka nilagay dito place, place of issue, Toronto, Canada, ibig sabihin yan, Canadian ka. Kasi dito in-issue yung passport mo. That's a very, very big mistake. So, kailangan natin ilagay na lagi yan Philippines because we are still Filipino citizen. Okay? So, whether or not saan man in-issue yung countries, uh, pag ka, hindi ka pa... Ka, um, hindi ka pa citizen or permanent resident ng country where you are applying, you should place Philippines place of issue. And then, issue date, expiry date. Now, national identity document. So, for now, wala pa tayo dyan, I believe. Pero, I think the 
the government of the Republic of the Philippines is working on this national ID. But for now, you click no para wala na tayong enter dyan. Okay, contact information. Current mailing address. So, yung current mailing address mo is yung kung saan ka nakatira. Kung may representative ka, let's say, ako, may, uh, ako yung representative, ang nilalagay ko sa current mailing address is my office address. And then, sa baba, yung residential address nyo. And, kung, kung DYI kayo, kung ano yung nilagay mo sa, sa mailing address, then sa baba, so sabihin, same as mailing address, magbablock out na yun. So, you don't have to enter um, the same information over again. Okay, next, lalagay mo naman yung telephone number mo sa Canada, lalagay mo cellular, kung cellular yan, kung landline, wala, kung landline lang, nandun ka nakikitira sa amo mo at landline ng gusto mo, lagay mo lang landline, pero most, most likely, lahat tayo may cellphone, cellular ang ilalagay natin dyan. So, alternate telephone number, kung yun, kung meron kang representative, yung alternate telephone number, ilalagay dun business. So, we don't have any problem with that. Yung fax, usually wala naman yan. Hi, sorry for the interruption. Nagkaroon ng problem ang ating internet connection, but we're back. Okay, so, tapos na po tayo sa page 2. Let's go to page 3 of IMM 55710, uh, application to extend my stay in Canada. Okay, so coming to Canada, ito yung subject line. So, date and place of your original entry to Canada. Ito yung, yung unang dumating ka rito sa Canada as a worker or as, as a student or as a visitor. So, kung yun ang unang entry mo sa Canada, ilalagay mo lahat siya dyan. So, kung worker ka, kung student ka or visitor. Now, sa place of place, place, saan ka ba? Kung sa Tor Toronto Pearson International Airport or sa Vancouver or sa Quebec. So, ilalagay mo sa kung saan ka unang-unang lang nag-land sa province ng Canada. Tapos, yung purpose, the original purpose of your coming to Canada, if you are a worker, yun sa drop-down box, ilagay nyo work. Ngayon, kung dumating ka dito as student, ilalagay mo dun study. Kung dumating ka rito as visitor, visit. So, nandun sa drop-down boxes nun. So, you just have to recall kung ano ang status mo nung originally pumunta ka rito sa Canada. Okay? So, next. Kung meron kayo subsequent entry sa Canada, tatanungin din, din, din yan. Kung yung most recent, most recent um, uh, entry to Canada if not the same as the original one. So, ilagay mo kung, kung umalis ka at bumalik ka. Hindi yung umalis ka, ha, yung pagbalik, pagbalik mo ang ilalagay mo doon. Tapos, ilalagay mo din yung place kung Toronto, kung Vancouver, Calgary, or elsewhere. Now, sabi number, number four, um, meron na, nakalagay din yung document number ng visitor record mo or yung work permit mo or yung, yung uh, study permit document number. Saan ba makikita yung document number? So kapag kakaharap mo, kaharap mo yung 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 current record mo, work permit, visit or study, pag kakaharap mo sa yung most current, yung most current ha. So pag kakaharap mo siya sa upper upper right hand corner sa top, meron nakalagay doon Canada. Tapos may nakalagay doon na, na number na madami, hindi 'yon. Yung pinaka sa baba, ang start nun, usually letter U. So, ilang numbers ba yun? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 numbers. So, yun, yung, yun yung, yung document number na ilalagay mo. Yung pangatlong numbers on your upper right hand corner sa topmost ng iyong permit. So, ilalagay mo dun yung document number which starts with a U and then followed by 9 digits. Okay? So, details... Details of intended work in Canada. So, if this is uh, uh, an employer-specific specific work permit, LMIA yan. So, lalagay mo Labor Market Impact Assessment Stream. Tapos, pagka yan ang inilagay mo, kailangan may ilalagay kang ano dyan. May ilalagay kang LMIA number sa kasunod. Ngayon, 
kung inilagay mo rin dyan at wala pang LMIA at nag-bridge ka awaiting LMIA approval, ilagay mo siyang 899999. So, pag, kasi pag hindi mo inilagay ng enter yan, hindi mo mababalidate dyan. Okay? So, kapag ka, pagka, pawa, let's say, gusto mo mag-pause, saka mo na itutuloy, isave mo lang siya. Hindi yan pwede mag-validate dahil hindi kompleto ang information. So, you just have to save it. Now, kapag ready ka na, pwede ka na ulit bumalik. Okay? So, kapag ka ito namang application mo, makikita mo nandun sa drop-down box. Kapag ka open work permit, ilagay mo na yung open work permit. Now, kapag inilagay mo ang open work permit, hindi na mag-show yung LMIA because this is an open work permit. Even though this is an occupation restricted open work permit for, for stage 1, you should write, you should choose the drop-down box for open work permit. Okay? Kakaintindihan tayo. Alright? So, details of my prospective employer. So, sa, sa letter A, name of employer, lagay natin dyan NA. Kasi hindi yan applicable sa atin. Ito yung mga nag-grant ang mga, yung mga, yung mga foreign, foreign Canadian, ano, um, foreign employer who has been awarded a contract to provide service to Canada. So, hindi sa atin applicable yan. So, A and B, ilagay lang natin dyan N. N slash A or not applicable. Okay, number three. Intended location of employment in Canada, yung province, kung saan province ka, let's say Ontario, tapos yung city, let's say dito nga sa city, Toronto, tapos ilagay mo na yung address kung sino yung employer mo. Kasi identified mo na yan dahil dahil alam mo na kapag ka sa labor market impact assessment or kung hindi mo pa alam sa open work permit ito for the first time pwedeng pagka hindi mo pa alam kung, kung saan ka mag, magtatrabaho uh, pwede mo itong ilagay yung address unknown unknown type mo lang UN tapos known unknown para sa mga open work permit applicants ito pero kapag ka sa Occupation Restricted Open Work Permit, ilagay mo na yung address kasi alam mo na yun kasi meron kang job offer. Number four, my occupation in Canada will be, let's say, home child care provider, home support worker. Huwag mo lagyan ng pilot kasi ano lang yun, um, yung occupation siya. So, home support worker or home child care provider. Tapos yung brief description niya, let's say, kung pagbata, Uh, personal care and assistance of the child's uh, daily activities and routines. Pagka elderly naman, assist in elderly's um, daily activities, uh, light housekeeping, medication assistance, yung kasyang-kasya lang dun. Companionship, um, accompany to doctor's appointment, yung mga pinaka-main lang na ilalagay, usually yan yung ano, food preparation, assistance sa uh, provide care and hygiene assistance, mobility assistance. Kaya niya na yun. Okay. Duration of employment. Pagka, oh, pagka, pagka sa occupation restricted open work permit, kahit one year lang yan, I would place three years for you to be on the safer side pagka stage 1 yan kasi ang ang ano yan yung occupation restricted open work permit ang validity niyan is always 3 years so with that i will say 3 years kapag stage 1 ngayon pag stage 2 pwede mong ilagay na 2 years minsan bibigay lang sa atin yan 1 year but this with the current um lengthy processing time i will say two years. And wow, let's say January 2021 to January 2023. So, hindi naman kailangang tamang-tama, eksaktong-eksakto. Huwag kayong mga problema. Basta maglagay ka ng date dyan. And then, si immigration na ang maglalagay ng issuance date and validity ng iyong work permit. Okay? So, sabi ko nga, kapag ka LMIA base yan, yung meron kang new employer or same employer, lalagay mo yung LMIA number. Ngayon, kapag ka wala ka pang LMIA number, mag-type ka lang ng 89 para ma-validate dyan. 99999 hanggang 89. Ngayon, kapag ka ito naman is open work permit, um, hindi, hindi mag-show up, mabablock out itong LMIA number. Alright? So, number 7, if you have been issued a Quebec Acceptance Certificate, QACAQ, lagay rin dito, dito natin. Usually, yung mga nandito, hindi sa Quebec na yan. 
Okay, education. Have you had any post-secondary education including university or college or training? If yes, you could give the full details of your highest level of post-secondary. Okay, let's say marami kang courses na, pini, na, na natapos. Let's say yung post-secondary mo, natapos ka ng nursing, natapos ka ng dentistry. So, ilagay mo muna yung parehas ng level yun, parehong haya. Or kung meron kang master's degree, master's degree na lang ilalagay mo. Wag mo na ilagay yung ibang bachelor's degree mo. Now, kung marami kang bachelor's degree at dalawa, yung first page, gamitin mo yan from to, and then, with the same application, gamitin mo yung page 3 pa rin, and then under education. So, huwag ka na mag, maglagay ng, ano, mag-ipit ng kung anong, pwede ka rin naman mag-ipit ng papel, or, but it's safer na na, gamitin mo na yung form ng, ano, ng page, the same page. Okay? So, employment naman. So, sa employment, lagi ito current. So, let's say yung current mo, unemployed ka, lagay mo, uh, unemployed ka. Tapos, yung company mo, lagay mo na lang dun home. Tapos, lagay naman din yung address mo kung sa Scarborough ka or sa Toronto ka. Tapos, lagay Canada and then Ontario or kung saan mang province ikaw. So, ilalagay mo yung from the date na nawalan ka ng, ng trabaho na unemployed ka. Let's say, na-employed ka uh, last year, uh, July last year, hanggang today, wala ka, pang, wala ka pang work because of the pandemic. So, kailangan mo ilagay unemployed from July last year until now, 2021. And then, yung succeeding employment mo na ilagay mo dyan. If you need more pages, i-use mo na lang yung, yung the same form para hindi ka na mag, magsulat-sulat and you can't be lost na kung meron kang maubit na, na information. Et, eto na rin ang gagawin mo. Ang gagawin mo lang dyan, ipiprint out mo na lang itong pages na continuation. I-label mo na lang siya ng page 3A or page 3B. Yung mga ganon. So, we will be using the same form but additional pages. Tapos, insert mo na lang yan sa kabila. And if you're doing online, i-print mo ito, tapos lagyan mo ng diagonal line yung hindi, hindi naka, ano, hindi applicable na. And then, ikabit mo na lang yan dun sa inyong cover letter. Para, para malaman nila na page kasi hindi mo naman maikakabit ito sa form itself. Dahil, ano siya, barcoded. Ito, separate pages na lang ito na i-upload mo din para malaman nila na merong other pages aside from the original form. Okay, now, uh, merong mga background information doon. Sabi niya, you must complete the section if you are 18 years of age or older. With the, with the past two years, have your family members, uh, ano lang naman yan, check, check, check yan. Ang medyo delikado lang dito, yung, ito yung number one, self-explanatory. Number two, the number two ng page, page four of six. Have you ever remained beyond the validity of your status, attended school without authorization, or work without authorization in Canada? So, kapag ka merong kang, alamawa, let's say, na out of status ka, pag na out of status ka, ilagay mo yes. So, wala kang status ni beyond the validity na yun. So, with this, okay naman if you're within the 90-day time frame and if you are covered under the public policy na, na extended yung restoration hanggang next year. So, you write the yes. And then, letter B, have you ever been refused of a visa or permit denied entry or ordered to leave Canada or any other country or territory? So, pagka meron ka nito applicable sa'yo, ilagay mo yung yes. Kapag hindi, ilagay mo naman yung no. Kapag ka yes, may explanation sa baba. So, I mean, let's say, explain mo 2A. Uh, then, kung na-refuse ka, kung kailan ka na-refuse, ilagay mo din dyan. And then, kung nag-apply ka rin ng PR, ilagay mo na rin dyan kung nag-alagay ka ng PR, PR, PR application and kung kailan mo na isubmit. Para everything is, is, is detailed on this application. Kasi meron time na pagka meron mga officers na sobrang higpit na kapag ka, hindi mo nilagay na meron kang refusals, yan na, refuse na kagad dyan. Misrepresentation as per A44, blah, blah, blah. So, ayun na. So, whether 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 marami o kukunti yung revisions mo kailangan i-identify mo on this portion 2B and 2, 2A 
So, hindi naman problem yan kung i- i- uh, ano mo, eh, na-refuse. Eh, ilagay mo lang siya. Alam naman nila yun. But, this is a declaration. You have to be truthful kung anong nangyayari sa application mo in the past. And, uh, pag okay ka na dito, i-click mo yung validate. Okay. Kaklinik mo na yung validate, lalabas na yan si barcode. Okay? So, pag lumabas na yan si barcode, at hindi ka pa ready mag ano, tapos ni-review mo ulit yung application mo the following your application. So, each time you make changes on your, on your validated application, you have to click validate again. Dahil pag hindi mo clinic yung validate at, at, hindi, at clinic mo lang yung save, hindi, hindi, ma, hindi, hindi, hindi ma-enter yung, ano, yung, yung changes. Kasi pagka each time na i-validate mo yan, kung ma, 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 mapapansin mo sa right-hand corner, sa lower-hand corner, meron yung serial number. Each time you validate, nagbabago yung serial number yan sa pinakababa ng barcode. Kaya, wag mag-alala na, na pagka ayaw mo i-validate kasi ganun-ganun, o oh, nag-validate ka na, hindi ka na pwede mag- mag-make ng changes, hindi hindi po tama yun. So, if each time na mag, mag, mag-make ka ng changes sa application ng, ng, ng ginawa mo, IMM 557.10, you could click validate. And kung, ma, kung, kung iti-check mo, kung tingnan mo muna yung old mo, meron siyang, meron siyang serial number below, and then uh, sa, next, sa next time na nag-validate ka, mag-iiba ulit yun. Okay? So, it doesn't matter miss kasi ang pumbeses ka mag mag-revalidate as long as na kapag ka meron kang correction gagawin mo yun and well, kung wala ka namang correction you're good but each time na magsasubmit ka ulit ng application minsan kakukuha mo lang ng form sa website 2 weeks two, 2 days ago make sure na yung form na ispapasa mo i-check mo rin sa website yung version code niya kung par kung hindi nagbago Kung nagbago siya, you have to use the updated form. Kapag hindi siya nagbago naman, you're good. Okay? So, for for now, tapos na po tayo sa IMM 5710. If you have more questions, um, you could you could send those questions on on the box. Sabi, uh, and then I'll get back to you. And yung mga hindi ko nasagot na mga, mga questions, pag ni-review ko after this live, I will be answering those or you could call me directly if you want immediate answer. My number is 416-795-2672 416-795-2672 Lagi po akong sumasagot kung hindi ko man po kayo masagot kaagad very sure po na I will get back to you after, after na maging available ako and if you're outside Canada naman, if you have questions, pwede kayo mag, mag ano lang sa aking messenger account, Corazon Ilaw, or sa WhatsApp, or sa Viber, pwede nyo akong tawagan doon sa my num- yung number ko po na 416-795-2672. Lagyan nyo lang po ng area code na 1. And then you could be able to contact me via Viber. Okay, so thank you again sa aking ma- sa, 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 sa aking mga viewers sa aking mga followers and thank you for 1800 viewers for 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 now and um, next time po we will continue on other forms and some of your questions so again if you have if you want immediate answers to your queries contact lang po Corazon Ino po okay until next time magkita ulit tayo dito sa aking live and for sure um, pag may mga bagong updates from immigration, I will be deriva- delivering them to you right, right here and there. Okay? Thank you very much and bye for now. Corazon Ilaw po again. Mabuhay world.